Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor for me to speak to you today. Today, I'm going to tell you my story. Many Ukrainians felt the beginning of the full-scale invasion before February 21st. It was because of the new phase of Russian war against Ukraine. And I was born in Kyiv, and I live in Kyiv all my life, live near airport. So the noise of airplanes are very familiar and native to me. I don't want to mention the name of my district in Kyiv, but it's a military district. And the fact that I'm an information security expert played a bad joke on me, because when I firstly sounded that Russian state media said that we have Nazis in Ukraine or my country was going to attack Russia, I understood that there would be a confrontation. Also, I cherished hope. I could not longer only hear the sound of the airplane or see tanks that I saw almost every day in my district. On February 23rd, before I fell asleep, I started reading a book about Russian propaganda. And I received a message from my friend, let's meet on Friday if it's no war. As every Ukrainian, I had dreams, plans, but I woke up at 5 a.m. because of explosions. I didn't want to leave Kyiv, but my parents convinced me that our area could be a next target for Russian shelling because it's military. And I will never forget how it's like to sit in a car in a traffic jam, hear sirens, hear Russian airplanes, they won't be able to move. I will never forget how at the gas station with parents, they heard noise from airplane and dropped away from here, but then we read the news that the town was bombed. And I will never forget how I came to a safe place in western Ukraine and found out that three bombs were found on the bridge I was crossing just two hours ago. My story is not as terrible as people from Mariupol, from Bucha, Erpin, Volnovakha, Balaklia, Alonov town, and Borodanka. And finally, I'm still alive. And I'm telling you that not to be pitied. Ukrainians don't tell their story to be pitied. We want you to know what's really going on in Ukraine and to tell you that it's not a show, it's our life. We in Ukraine are really glad that Europe is now showing its track in what it has always been. I'm talking about your civil society, which is starting to put pressure on politicians and explain them that helping Ukraine means helping Europe. Ukrainians are fighting not only for themselves, they are fighting for our common values. As far as I know, you are in Strasbourg now, so you perfectly know what words are written on True Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. It's Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité, which means liberty, equality, and fraternity. Ukrainians stand for it. And please do not consult yourself that war is far away and won't touch you, because we also saw that war in the 21st century is something impossible. And as a member of our organization, I see our target for nearest future is to help Ukraine. How we can do it? Informational front is also a front. We must continue to talk about Ukraine and tell the truth. And I ask you to go to the streets on your cities, have rallies, and continue to explain your governments what's going on and why we need this help. If you can, I want to ask you to help our army. It seems controversial or impossible, but as our foreign minister said yesterday, today weapons serve the purpose of peace. We don't want anyone to feel what we feel. Therefore, we want to end this war within our borders, within territory of Ukraine, so that neither Lithuania, Latvia, Poland, France, nor Austria see the atrocities of the Russian forces. But for this, we need your help. And you perfectly know why I'm pronouncing this speech. You perfectly know why Victoria and Katerina are not in Ukraine right now. And you perfectly know why Alena was forced to see those atrocities and left her town. So what I want to ask you is stand up for Ukraine, show your support and continue to speak about Ukraine and scream about Ukraine. Slava Ukraini!